Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. Room service. I've brought the bottles you ordered. I didn't order me no drinks. And you're not wearing the hotel uniform. Move on, you drunk. Hmm. Hmm. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the all struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. <laughs> nah, not that. <clears throat> Fall descended over me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. <clears throat> God, that's worse. He wants him alive! I felt fall seep through my bones like the pain of a good beating. <laughs> Mediocre, but appropriate. Against all odds, next morning I got up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And I had my kind, unknown assailants to thank. The beating had taken its toll, but for the first time in months, I had slept like a baby. Oh, come on, Helen, focus! All right, take five. We'll work on that double backhand later. Mr. Blackmore, what can I do for the FBI? Actually, the real question is, what don't you want the FBI to do to you? <laughs> Quick to thread, are we? Not that I'm not flattered, mind you, but I'd appreciate if you were a bit less fake. Maybe if we could speak in private? Alec! Coming! You've got four minutes, Mr. Blackmore, so... Make them count. We know you smuggle contraband during your international tournaments. Oh, really? Are you sure? 
Like what exactly? Hmm. I think she called my bluff. Or did she? Should I follow through or say I was kidding? I'm convinced you're part of a dangerous international network that smuggles champies. <laughs> For a moment there, I thought you were serious. Glad to see the FBI has a sense of humor. You've got my full attention now. We know about you and Desmond O'Leary. Wow. The FBI sure knows what it's doing. So, out of the 100 million Americans who know about that, who did you extort to get such highly confidential information? The thing is, well... <sighs> you see, I'd love to wipe out that part of my past, but whatever. Do you have any regrets? Ads pay more than trophies. Can you believe it? Being associated with such a shady character could only damage my reputation. Trust me, never get involved with a married man. They say you're currently involved with Al Stone, the boxer. Is that correct? Wow, your sagacity never ceases to amaze me. Don't beat around the bush. We know why you're with him. Oh, so you like his biceps too. Desmond O'Leary asked you to seduce Stone. Why? What? No, I met Al by chance at a party. A party hosted by Desmond O'Leary. No, that can't be. No one is that shrewd. Not even him. Damn, I hate that bastard. We're aware of at least six rigged games during your first year as a professional player. And? You won all of them. Are you trying to offend me? I give my all on the court. I can't be held accountable if my rivals don't do the same. Go interrogate them. In any case, now I know why you mentioned O'Leary. What do you really have against him? And don't say illegal gambling. O'Leary is a murderer. Every criminal organization has blood on his hands. His is no exception. And we have proof. Well... What's the big deal? At least it's not a matter of, uh, I don't know, smuggling champies. I'm serious, Miss Moore. America can't afford to let anyone shake its foundations like that. And America's sweetheart can't afford it either. Help us out. Talk to us. And why should I, Mr. Blackmore? What do I stand to gain or lose? Our country faces drastic problems that require drastic solutions. Do you want to be part of the problem or part of the solution? This is actually quite simple. One lucky gal. You have a light, sir? <laughs> the pearly white teeth of someone who barely smokes. Am I making her nervous? Damn. I'm almost out of fluid. Want to know my trick? Go down to start, then up with it, and then down again. Don't worry, I'm not making any assumptions about your masculinity. Will I get to smoke today? Thanks. I don't know what you want me to say. You're trying to frame O'Leary, perhaps rightfully so, but I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Believe me, 
If I had the slightest idea. Come on, Helen. <sighs> Time to work on your backhand. Let's go. <sighs> Do you smoke? Nice meeting you, Mr. Blackmore. Did you bring my water? America's sweetheart gave you her cigarette? Dear God, she has the hots for you! I can't believe you said good old weekly to investigate that stupid walrus while you were hanging out with Helen Moore herself! So, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah, you're gonna love this. You ready? I've got news. But I happen to also have a pl- uh. Black Sad. My husband has disappeared. What? Who is- Oh, Mrs. Colbert. But last night he got a phone call. He said he had to work. And he still hasn't come back. Nobody's seen him at work since yesterday evening. Plus, I haven't heard from you since our first conversation. Do you have anything? I wouldn't worry too much. It hasn't even been 24 hours. Not even the police take these matters seriously until it's been at least 48 hours. I don't know. He'll be back, I promise. Mrs. Colbert? That good for nothing! I'm gonna scratch his eyes out! I'll tear his stupid head off! I'm gonna make him regret! Uh, but what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. But now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. Uh, 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 Come on, spit mm. it out. I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person, and that Farnham, who's staying at, at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles of bourbon. So. Here's my incredible plan. I'll go to the hotel. <laughs> I'd knock him out. Huh. And then take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Huh? 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 Didn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No?
Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. John Blackmore. I work for Frank Cassidy. He asked me to bring you these bottles so you could choose which one you prefer for the game. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another start. I always have an ace up my sleeve. Black boy? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. They killed my girlfriend. And no matter how hard I try, I just can't let go. And those bastards pay for what they've done to you, boy. They paid. Well, good. Honor's being restored, and sure enough, our good Lord will see to it that they burn in hell. You need to move on, partner. Plenty of lookers out there. Find yourself a charming lead, even if it costs you a pretty penny. One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shade last night. No! Please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. If you don't answer my question, you can go to hell. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Five dollars. Hmm. There's only one cut I can give you for that price. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. 
our host has many enemies and someone has to keep them at bay. On second thought, uh, I was just fixing to leave. If you don't answer my question, you can go to hell. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? A million bucks. Hmm. For that price, I can get you a one-of-a-kind cut that will last a lifetime. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. On second thought, uh, I was just fixing to leave. If you don't answer my question, you can go to hell. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Man, sure enough, booze put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. My second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my gun and only deal with hookers. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm betraying my boss by saying this, but Cassidy's bad news. You're not boy, he's in the boxing news. I mean, he won't play a fair game, but I can tell you his trick for a small share of the winnings. What I care if I lose. If you knew how much I pay just to get in the game, you'd chew off your own pants. <laughs> Pick your teeth with your belt buckle. It's just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me one of the seats. These are the things I am, boy. Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I gotta get somewhere. This is sick. I get it. I just, just put, put it over. Over. I think it's. I'll be right back. Ding dong. Interesting name for a town. Not even a Bible. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never giving a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <laughs> 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 
Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me a receipt. Who do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec. I'll get it. I, I just... Just... Put, put, uh, I'll be right back. Farnham's address book. Who knows what kind of shitty characters are in there. They smell like... a party. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. Not even a Bible. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never giving a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <laughs> Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me a receipt. Who do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec. I'll get it. I, I just... Just put, put it over. Over. Uh, I think he's... Uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never giving a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <laughs> <laughs> Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me a receipt. Who do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec. I'll get it. I, I just... Just... Put, put it over. Over. Uh, I think he's... Uh, I'll be right back.
Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no... Oh, who in the hell? Find him. By God, if it ain't the hero of the day. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> this will surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. I'll be damned. Boxing at the Grand Ole Opry? Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. Nah, just a few bourbons, that's all. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? Luckily, there was only one Kinney in front of him's address book. Kinney Eeks, residing at... Cornell Plaza, Manhattan, stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? They smell like a party. Ding dong? Interesting name for a town. Don't tell me, Billy Bob. 
This here is my new friend Fada. Am I right? Sure enough, but your slasher friend sure could learn how to treat his customers. Hey, Billy Bob, come on. This guy's a good guy. He's one of us. My apologies, sir. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. It'll be my pleasure. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. The owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. <laughs> Sorry, partner. You ain't got a chance in hell. But look at it this way. You're fixing to learn new tricks. <laughs> for better or for worse, I only need one trick. Playing well. The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. Had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas, where gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? Ha 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 ha! Ding Dong! That's it. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep his men. Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds, the hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. No. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women. They even take our damn names. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> you're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool? And I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Sorry, partner. I can't stand pool. Well, then just come down to drink and drink some more. Well, looks like Farnham won't be venturing into the pool hall business anytime soon. To be honest, several things got me worried. 
so I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Those there athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Billy Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, hey, hey! By the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, playing bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't know. No, that ain't it. I I'm pretty sure it had something to do with her head. Damn, I don't like waiting. Kenny won't like it, but I'm not gonna sit here wondering. Billy Bob, pass me the phone. Come on, come on, come on! Sometimes you get the feeling that it's all gone wrong. That you've made a terrible mistake. Sorry, did I say sometimes? <laughs> no, that only happens once in a lifetime. Mark my words, Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, playing bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fellow's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. They're... But she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. That's it, tranquilizers. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. I don't believe this. What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham. Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing, and he's gonna lose it all with poker. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm, yeah, so how can I be of help? Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even friggin' happen.
I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxers from official competitions when their managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Come on, come on, let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game, unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Sure, the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit had a certain poetic quality. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Sure, the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit had a certain poetic quality. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. What at something? I don't know how you deal with all of them. All boys? Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. Come on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't Cassidy. lay a finger on them until they're twelve. After that, well... <laughs> let's just say... Some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? That damn eagle represents the lowest scum of our society. There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Sooner or later, the police are gonna bust your ass. Quince. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you're as bad at hiding those poor girls as you are at keeping that ace up your sleeve. What? You lying piece of shit! Quince! Uh, don't believe a word he's saying, Frank. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. <laughs> 
for washing up. It's a deal. <sighs> Please, take that flying scumbag's tokens. And mine too, if you want them. I'm feeling generous. Hey, turns out the governor accepted my suggestion to let Bobby yell out of prison on the day of the fight. Hey, this is turning out to be the perfect night. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me, Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. My own tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, Though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans. <laughs> 